Welcome back to The Night Shift. I'm Clint, and I promise if you stick with me for the next five minutes, I'm going to blow your mind. A group of researchers has just put out a paper in the Journal of Modern Physics called Extraterrestrial Life in the Thermosphere, Plasma's UAP Pre-Life, Fourth State of Matter. And basically, this paper is suggesting that a huge number of UAP sightings that uh, we've been seeing over the years may actually be living organisms that are made of plasma. And not only that, these creatures may exist in our upper atmosphere and in orbit around the Earth, and they can descend into the lower atmosphere and interact with us. And some of the stuff that we've been seeing since the 1940s, even sightings of um, Foo Fighters by World War II pilots, may have actually been these creatures. Check this out. I'm going to read the abstract, and I'm going to show you a video of a NASA mission. This is STS-75. This is taken directly from NASA's YouTube channel, and you can um, check the link in the show notes and go there yourself and watch this. Among a number of other experiments that STS-75 was running, one of them involved a electromagnetic tether that was reeled out into the upper atmosphere and was emitting pulses of electromagnetic energy uh, into the upper atmosphere. Not exactly sure what it was that they were trying to accomplish, but that's what they were doing. The tether is 12 miles long, and at one point it breaks free from the shuttle and basically is floating free in space. That is this white thing that you see in front of you here. I'm going to switch to a bigger view so you can see this a little better. I'm going to read the abstract of this paper while you watch this, because this is amazing. Plasmas up to a kilometer in size and behaving similarly to multicellular organisms have been filmed on 10 separate NASA space shuttle missions over 200 miles above the Earth within the thermosphere. These self-illuminated plasmas are attracted to and may feed on electromagnetic radiation. They have different morphologies, cone, cloud, donut, spherical, cylindrical and have been filmed flying towards and descending from the thermosphere into thunderstorms, congregating by the hundreds and interacting with satellites generating electromagnetic activity, approaching the space shuttles. Computerized analysis of flight path trajectories documents these plasmas travel at different velocities from different directions and change their angle of trajectory, making 45 degree, 90 degree, and 180 degree shifts and follow each other. They've been filmed accelerating, slowing down, stopping, congregating, engaging in hunter-predatory behavior, and intersecting plasmas, leaving a plasma dust trail in their wake. Similar lifelike behaviors have been demonstrated by plasmas created experimentally. Plasmas may have been photographed in the 1940s by World War II pilots identified as Foo Fighters, repeatedly observed and filmed by astronauts and military pilots, and classified as unidentified aerial anomalous phenomenon. Plasmas are not biological, but may re represent plasmas are not biological, but may represent a form of pre-life that via the incorporation of elements common in space could result in the synthesis of RNA. Plasmas constitute a fourth state of matter, are attracted to electromagnetic activity, and when observed in the lower atmosphere, likely account for many of the UAP UFO sightings over the centuries. So this is the 12-mile long tether, and you can see these, these objects, these specks, swarming this thing. And they behave like living organisms. Look, some of them, look how fast these things are going. This is a really amazing concept. There's a clip floating around of... Uh, former CIA director Brennan, I believe it is. And he's he's going to great pains and twisting himself into knots, trying to explain basically um, that some of the UAP sightings that people are seeing may be a form of intelligence that is just different than anything that we understand. And he might have been referring to this. Lou Elizondo has a clip, or there is a clip of Lou Elizondo saying that in ancient times, sailors found things that they couldn't understand and described them as sea monsters and beasts. And that as our understanding matured, 
we came to realize that these were just parts of nature and that eventually as our understanding continued to mature we would realize that a lot of the uap phenomena that we see are just a part of nature extended beyond what we uh, currently consider the boundary of our understanding look at these they're glowing blinking flashing they move and look like deep sea creatures bioluminescent deep sea life These plasmas may have been first photographed in the 1940s, identified as Foo Fighters by U.S., Japanese, and German pilots, and observed by astronauts beginning in the 1960s, and may have been recently filmed by military pilots and classified as unidentified aerial phenomena. Given the attraction to electromagnetic and other powerful sources of energy and the responsiveness to radio signals and sources of heat, it is likely these plasmas may account for at least some of the anecdotal UAP sightings as recorded by the U.S. Department of Defense Unidentified Anomalous Reporting System over nuclear power plants, the areas above and surrounding Hiroshima and Nagasaki destroyed by atomic bombs in 1945, and Fukushima Prefecture, site of a major nuclear power plant accident in 2011, and for numerous reports of UAPs approaching and following. Airplanes. These plasmas have been filmed swarming toward and congregating by the hundreds around satellites generating electromagnetic activity into the thermosphere and observed approaching and appearing outside the windows of NASA space shuttles. Um, so they go on to reference a number of shuttle missions, like 10 different shuttle missions, and they rule out space junk and debris because these things have been sighted as far back as the 1960s. Uh, in space, but before a time when there was uh, space junk littering the uh, flight path of our astronauts. So um, at that time, there was no space junk to speak of, really. And um, they still saw tons and tons and tons of these things. And they didn't really know uh, what they were. But this might actually explain it. Um, STS-115 commander states, quote, the best way I can describe it is as some kind of reflective cloth, some type of metallic looking type of cloth, a structure which is definitely not rigid. It's not a solid metal structure. So they go on to suggest that some of these things can appear translucent and then change their appearance to appear solid. Um, and there's a ton of analysis in here. They run the uh, flight path of these objects through some computer analysis, and they're able to basically discern that they move independently under their own power and um, independently of one another. They move in packs and groups. They hunt. They feed off of thunderstorms, electrical energy. Nuclear power attracts them. Plasmas have been filmed by missions STS-96 and STS-106, approaching, then descending from the thermosphere into hurricanes and thunderstorms, or emerging from waning storms and streaming back into space. Plasmas approach from different directions and speeds, often forming groupings of two or more, then descend and disappear into the thunderclouds in the lower atmosphere. Thus, it appears that many UFO UAP sightings are not observations or evidence of extraterrestrial spacecraft piloted by alien robots or humanoids, but of plasmas that have been attracted to powerful sources of electromagnetic activity in the lower atmosphere. Uh, key thing here, it is important to emphasize that the crew of STS-75 viewed these specimens with the naked eye and with binoculars and the telescope crews provided eyewitness descriptions. And they go on to include some photographs of uh, sightings from World War II and shortly thereafter. Let's scroll down here. Here we go. This is a photo from 1945. An official U.S. Coast Guard photograph shot by U.S. Coast Guard photographer Shell R. Alpert. Took a photograph through a window screen showing three cloud-like formations over the Winter Island Salem, Massachusetts Air Station at 9.35 a.m., that looks like four to me, but it says three. 
Here's some uh, photographs of essentially Foo Fighters from World War II, cited by Japanese and American pilots and German pilots as well. And it's crazy because if you think about the number of times throughout our history that uh, UAP sightings have been associated with nuclear tests or nuclear sites or sites where nuclear uh, material is stored, it's astonishing. And there's a, there has been a huge connection between UAP sightings and, and nuclear weapons forever, as far back as you want to go. And so this group goes the extra step and suggests that some of the stuff that we may have even seen back in 2015, um, possibly even the gimbal um, UAP could have been this. They also go to great pains to point out they're not saying all UAP sightings are plasma creatures. They're just saying that this could explain a huge number of those sightings, and we may actually be looking at different things here. And they say that certainly a lot of sightings are physical craft that are manufactured and not made out of plasma, but these are uh, also a thing. And so when we think about all of the different sightings that have been referenced over the years, we often hear about orbs of light, right? That float and change color and move around and seem to move through objects, solid objects. This could be what they're talking about. It could actually be a new form of life that um, we were previously unaware of that uh, exists alongside us within the world and is attracted to or stimulated by all the electromagnetic activity in our society. Think about it. There's electromagnetic activity everywhere. And um, these beings seem to be uh, excited by it and attracted to it and interact with it. Maybe there's something uh, to it. So I'll link to this paper in the show notes and you can read it yourself. It's about 50 pages long. They uh, even suggest, this is cool, one last thing before I go. Suggestions and locations for capturing filming plasma UAP. As documented in this report, plasmas in the thermosphere are attracted to sources of electromagnetic activity, including tethered satellites generating electric pulses into the space medium. Therefore, it is possible to scientifically study and examine these plasmas as they form, congregate, and interact. This can be accomplished via the launching of a tethered satellite generating electromagnetic pulses and equipped with multiple cameras with infrared x-ray, telescopic, and other sensory capabilities, i.e. an alien hunting satellite. So cool. If this same alien hunter satellite is equipped with an electrified net, perhaps it would be possible to attract and capture an extraterrestrial plasma. In addition to satellites, there are locations on Earth where plasma-like atmospheric anomalies have been observed to occur with some frequency, such as Hiroshima and Nagasaki, Japan, and the Hestelin Valley in central Norway. So um, we could theoretically go there and set up uh, the right equipment and actually capture these things. So what do you think? Let me know in the comments. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And if you're not already a subscriber, hey, hit that subscribe button. It really helps me out. It doesn't cost a dime. It only takes a second. And if you like what I'm doing here and you want to support my work financially, consider joining the channel and becoming a member. Uh, we do members-only content every month, and it's a lot of fun. We have a great group. We get into some interesting discussions, and uh, they're just a bunch of cool people. Be like them. Be one of them. Help me out. Thank you so much for being here. Thanks for watching the channel. Thanks for watching this video. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, keep looking up.